There's nothing I could do. It's part of the code. <laughs> All plans between men are tentative. If one man should suddenly have an opportunity to pursue a woman, it's like these two guys never met each other ever in life. This is the male code. And it doesn't matter how important the arrangements are. I mean, most of the time they scrub a space shuttle mission, it's because one of the astronauts met someone on his way to the launch pad. They hold that countdown. He's leaning against a rocket talking to her. So listen, when I get back, what do you say we get together for some time? I saw DiMaggio in the donut shop again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Joe DiMaggio? Joe DiMaggio. You know, this time I went in and I sat down across from him and I really watched him. I studied his every move. For example, he dunks. Joe DiMaggio dunks his donut? That's right. See, now I know it's not him. Joe DiMaggio could not be a dunker. Oh, he's a dunker. And nothing diverts his attention. Like I'm, uh, you know, I, like I'm sitting in there, you know? And uh, I start banging on the table, you know, to, uh, you know, so that he'll look up, you know, like I'm sitting there, you know, and I, you know. He wouldn't move. So then I started doing these yelping noises, like, yeah! Yeah! Uh, No reaction, because the guy is so focused, you see. He can just black out anything that's going on around him. See, that's how he played baseball. He dunks like he hits. So then what? Well, then the waitress, she comes up and she tells me to shut up and they're gonna throw me out. Why didn't you just call out his name? You know what they do in there? Did you see Cuckoo's Nest? They put those electrodes in your head. It's not really a mental institution. It's more like a depression clinic. She went out to Woodhaven and checked herself in. I'm, I'm sick over this. Who told you this? Her roommate. I've driven women to lesbianism before, but never to a mental institution. You get to wear slippers all day. Friends visit, they pity you. Pity's very underrated. I like it, it's good. Only woman looking for companionship. A spinster. Maybe a virgin. Maybe she got hurt a long time ago. She's a schoolgirl. There was a boy. It didn't work out. So now she needs a little tenderness. She needs a little understanding. She needs a little Kramer, huh? Very rare. Boys are sick. But what do girls do? We just tease someone till they develop an eating disorder. You wouldn't believe the women at this club. Ooh, man. It's amazing how many beautiful women live in New York. I actually find it kind of intimidating. Well, you're as pretty as any of them. Just need a nose job. <laughs> please, please. Isabel, she is the most despicable woman I have ever met in my life. I have never been so repulsed by someone mentally and so attracted to them physically at the same time. It's like my brain is facing my penis in a chess game. <laughs> and I'm letting them win. You're not letting them win. He wins till you're 40. Then what? He still wins, but it's not a blowout. <laughs> I'll tell you, the sex. <laughs> it was like an animal. I mean, it was just completely uninhibited. It's like going to the bathroom in front of a lot of people and not caring. It's not like that at all. All right, are we ready? Come on, let's get this show on the road. You sure you want us here for this? Yes. Shouldn't a doctor do it? No, he said I could do it. Okay, here goes. This is very exciting, very exciting. It's like watching a birth. <laughs> It looks good. Great job. You got butchered. We have no midsize available at the moment. I don't understand. I made a reservation. Do you have my reservation? Oh, yes, we do. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. That's why you have the reservations. I know why we have reservations. I don't think you do. <laughs> If you did, I'd have a car. 
<laughs> See, you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. And that's really the most important part of the reservation, the holding. I just don't enjoy being with him. Well, that's what's important. I'm meeting him for lunch at Chadway's around the corner. Do I have to break up with him face to face or can I just wait and do it over the phone? Well, how many times have you been out with him? Seven. Face to face. Oh. Seven dates is a face to face breakup? If it was six, I could have let you go. <laughs> but seven, I'm afraid, is over the limit. Unless, of course, there was no sex. Hmm. How's the pasta over there? That is damn good scotch. I gotta do a commercial for this stuff. Mmm. Boy, that Hennigan goes down smooth. And afterwards, you don't even smell. That's right, folks. I just had three shots of Hennigan's and I don't smell. Imagine, you can walk around drunk all day. That's Hennigan's. No smell, no tell, scotch. Hello, everybody. Hey, George, come here. I'm going to tell you what I think. Oh, I know you don't care what I think, but I'm going to tell you. I think that you are terrific. That's all. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> an early Christmas present. A Christmas present? That's right. For who? For you. <gasps> Get out of here! <laughs> Say you got a big job interview and you're a little nervous? Well, throw back a couple of shots of Hennigan's and you'll be as loose as a goose and ready to roll in no time. And because it's odorless, why, it'll be our little secret. <laughs> A-T-double-N-R. Kramer. Yeah, that'll do. I'm going to get right to the point. Uh, it's come to my attention that you and the cleaning woman have engaged in sexual intercourse on the desk in your office. Is that correct? <laughs> Who said that? She did. Was that wrong? Should I not have done that? I tell you, I gotta plead ignorance on this thing because if anyone had said anything to me at all when I first started here that that sort of thing was frowned upon. You know, because I've worked in a lot of offices and I tell you, people do that all the time. You realize, of course, you're naked. Naked, dressed. I don't see any difference. You ought to sit here. There's a difference. You got something against the naked body? I got something against yours. I got a couple deep knee bends, maybe some squat thrusts. Who's got time for squat thrusts? All right. How about skipping breakfast? I'm guessing you're not a half grapefruit and black coffee man. Oh, I like a good breakfast. I understand. I like a good breakfast. As long as you don't wind up trapped in a room in bib overalls and pigtails, being counseled by Dick Gregory. I'm not ashamed of my body. Exactly. That's your problem. You should be. I mean, it's gotten to the point when I'm flirting with operators on the phone. I almost made a date with one. Oh, so there's still hope. I don't want hope. Hope is killing me. My dream is to become hopeless. When you're hopeless, you don't care. Mm -hmm. And when you don't care, that indifference makes you attractive. Uh -huh. So hopelessness is the key. It's my only hope. <laughs> I'll go on the date, but that's that. <laughs> hey. hey. Do you know my friend Bob Sacramento? Oh, the guy from Jersey. Yeah, he just got a job at a condom factory, medicine. <laughs> Look at this. He gave me a gross. <laughs> with all of them. Oh, well. <laughs> come on, take some, Jerry. Grab them. No, thanks. They look like they came out of a cereal box. <laughs> hey, come on. I'll lay in here. Take half a bag. Half a bag? What am I, a hooker? <laughs> anyway, they look kind of cheap. Oh. I'll take one. Yeah. It's possible. By the way, when you see George, give him these. These will work. <gasps> I knew those condoms were defective. Oh, how did?
did you know they were defective? Because, because she missed her period. She missed her period? <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe it. I'm a father. I did it. My boys can swim. I can do it. I can do it. I can't park in a garage. Why? I don't know, I just can't. Nobody in my family can pay for parking, it's a sickness. My father never paid for parking, my mother, my brother, nobody. We can't do it. I'll pay for it. You don't understand. Garage. I can't even pull in there. It's like going to a prostitute. Why should I pay when if I apply myself, maybe I could get it for free?